So guys, here we are. Before I begin, I just want to say that ayahuasca is pure magic, pure medicine. I've never experienced anything so beautiful, so impossible, so life-changing. It was all around the greatest experience I've ever had. So here's my experience report. Let's begin because there's a lot to talk about. But the date was October 30th, 2015. The time was 5.30 p.m. Uh, me and my girlfriend had made our way to Nira's house where we were meeting up with you know, everyone that was traveling with us to the ceremony. So we get to Nira's house, Nira's there, and there's these two other girls, Sophia and Cassidy. And I just want to know, I couldn't have imagined doing this with a more positive group of people. It made the experience just that much better because these souls were just some of the most beautiful souls I've ever met. Um, so yeah, we load up the van that we dubbed the uh, Magic School Bus and start making our way to ceremony. Um, it takes about a good two hours to get there, I want to say, uh, following just this maze of lefts and rights into the middle of the desert. Um, so we get there, this place called Sacred Earth, and there's this giant geodesic dome, and, and look in the description of this video, because I'll try to put pictures so you get a better understanding of what I'm talking about, but and we're in the middle of the desert. Um, I'm talking, you hear coyotes howling, you hear uh, owls hooing, you hear, I mean, we're under a million stars, and it was just absolutely beautiful. And the coolest part is, is that I didn't find this out until the morning where I was able to see where I was at, but we were not far at all from where I grew up. I'm from the Tohono O'odham Reservation, and that is literally, it was literally like three, five miles south. So it was very, it, was a, it happened in a very meaningful place because I grew up in this area. It was just complete destiny. But um, we get to ceremony and start unloading the van. That's where we meet the facilitators, uh, Jared and Scott. And these guys are just doing amazing things for the world. Also just the most beautiful souls I've ever met. So, you know, they introduced themselves and we, you know, they said, all right, go find yourself a spot in the circle. So we start taking all of our stuff and, you know, making a little spot. Now, me and my girlfriend had um, already agreed that we're not going to sit near each other. Nira had mentioned, you know, it's best to separate yourselves from, you know, your significant other because if you hear them, you know, scared or throwing up, you know, your first instinct is to, like, try to help them out, which you don't want to do because this is your journey. You want to just focus on yourself. So we had decided, you know, we're going to sit, you know, distance. So she sat all the way on the other side, and I sat over here. Um, there was already people there. Uh, when we had got there, we were waiting for... Um, a couple other individuals, I think one more person, I don't remember exactly, but they eventually come through. Um, it was crazy too, like literally 15 minutes before the uh, the ceremony began, the sun began, or not the sun, the, uh, the moon began to rise, but it was the craziest moon ever. It was so huge and so orange and it was like literally raising like in front of us. It was the craziest shit. Um, but, you know, we sit down and the ceremony pretty much begins and Jared starts telling this story about a man who had drank ayahuasca and had bladder cancer. I'm not going to go into much detail, but it was a very touching story. The man was able to find peace and it was, it was a beautiful story, just a great way to start the ceremony. So they start to pass around mapacho, I think it's called, I could be mistaken, uh, but it's essentially Peruvian tobacco. So everyone you know, uh, smokes, you didn't, well, you didn't have to smoke it, which I did, but, um, uh, you pretty much, like, blow it on yourself to bless yourself, and then they pass around this, um, tobacco water, where you get a spoonful, and you snort it in each nostril, um, which essentially relaxes you, it clears your sinuses, stuff like that, um, so while they're doing this, you know, they're kind of giving us the do's and don'ts. There's the talking area. You are allowed to leave the circle if you feel like you need to kind of take a breath. You know, da da da. There's the bathroom. The bathroom's over there. You know, just giving us the do's and don'ts. No phones, no electronics, no this, that, 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 that. Um, so, yeah. 
I'm completely nervous. Um, and they say, those who have never drank ayahuasca, come receive your first cup. So I get up and I walk over there and of course I was the first person to fucking get a cup. So I'm sitting there and I'm just, and he pours a shot glass of ayahuasca and he puts it in front of me and my dumb ass tried to like, I thought I was, I thought we were getting a cup and we go sit down and drink it when we're ready. But no, it's, it wasn't like that. He's like, you got to drink it here. So I'm like, okay. So he's like, think of your intention. So I thought of my intention, which I'm gonna keep personal, but I wanted pretty much healing, just know that. And he says, now take it back. And I dropped it. Now they say ayahuasca is disgusting. It's the most nastiest thing you've ever had, but it wasn't too bad. It tasted like mud kind of, but more chocolatey. I, and if you understand what that means, it, but they say it gets worse and worse with each time you take it. So the first time's not that bad. This, and then I had a second cup later that night, which we'll get to, but, and that did taste a little bit more bitter, but my third time's probably gonna be nasty. Yeah, anyways, so I drank the ayahuasca and I go back to my, my space. Um, and yeah, and essentially it was just playing the waiting game after that. I mean, it, I was waiting for about a good hour uh, yeah, a good 45 minutes to an hour. Now, I was wearing this. This is called a mind fold. And what this does is it blocks out 100% of the light. Like, no matter where you're at, you can't see anything. Uh, so I slipped that on, and I just kind of like kicked back and is laying there. Now, it's, it was like 47 degrees, and for us desert people, that's freezing balls. So, and I start to get warm, and I'm laying there. And I'm just sitting in complete darkness. Um, like I said, like it's 45 minutes, an hour and 15 minutes. I, I don't know, time is really weird. But, you know, that essentially passed. And this is when it's, I felt it started to kick in. Because, like, you know when you're sitting in a very, like, quiet room alone, and you hear that ring? Like you, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. There's a ring that you hear when you're just surrounded by silence. I started to hear that, but it was just unnaturally loud. Just the loudest I've ever heard it. It's just Wee! I'm sitting there like, holy shit. <laughs> and then, um, you know, I could feel my stomach kind of like churning a little bit. Like I was not sick, like not sickness. I don't even know how to describe it. But it was breaking it down. Like I could, I could literally feel it breaking this substance down within my stomach. And then under, like I said, this blocks out 100% of the light. I, out of my peripheral vision, I started to see like roots, like of light, slowly, slowly starting to move. Like this took like 20 minutes for him to like meet. And I'm sitting there and at first, like my first thought was like, well, my mindfold's not working. So, and I was like, wait, there's no way. Like these, this is ayahuasca visions. I think I'm starting to begin. And then like, as it, the closer it went is like, like to connecting, like the further back, it felt like I was falling. Like I felt like I was sinking into the floor and I just laid back and I was just receptive to it. I was just like, take me away. So when they finally connect, how do I explain this? Like they finally connect and they start to morph and they like start to create these patterns but then they were creating eyes, like a bunch of eyes and they were like looking at me and like it created like this, there was like a circle, like a, like a portal is the best way to describe it, under these patterns and I could feel my consciousness starting to float towards it and these eyes were watching me like go towards it and as I entered that portal I was just blown into ayahuasca world like just complete geometrics everywhere like it felt like I was in a giant clock and I was watching all the gears moving together and like just with such synchronicity and it was just absolutely beautiful and I remember just wow and wow god it just gives me goosebumps just thinking about it just it was so beautiful just so beautiful and then mother 
began to appear. Now, as through all my research of ayahuasca, I've always heard of it being deeply affiliated with snakes. They say she takes the form of a snake. And that's what I began to see. I began to see the snake body slowly start slivering by. Um, slithering, excuse me. Um, yeah, like scales, like these psychedelic scales. And it's just like, ra starts wrapping around me and I feel it like wrapping around my soul. And it says, it starts to speak to me. And it says, hello, oh, I've been waiting for you. And uh, man, I can't even describe it. It just, it started speaking to me. And I was like, no, I've been waiting for you. And it says, you've had me for a very, very long time. I've known you since you were a little boy. You, we, have, we hold a bond that you have carried through many of your lifetimes. You used to drink me when your name was Joaquin, when your name was Jeremiah. And it started telling me about my past lives and we've always held a close bond. And it was just, it was crazy. Like the, I was having a conversation with Mother Ayahuasca and totally in the form of a snake, like this just alien snake. It had a bunch of eyes and it, it was so crazy, man, these goosebumps. So, you know, it starts talking to me and, it's, and, I'm, and it says, why do you think you've always been afraid of snakes? And my whole life I've been terrified of snakes. I think I mentioned that in my bad trip video. And it says, that's the ego that wants to push me away. The ego wants you, does not want you to succeed. The ego wants you to do nothing but fail. So the ego makes you afraid of who I am, of what I am and what I represent. And that's why you've always been terrified of snakes. And we, we, you know, we start having a conversation about, you know, like stuff like that. And it starts telling me about Christianity and like how the Bible has completely been manipulated by man through thousands of years and that it's not even the real, pretty much the real story and like the fact that man has made the snake evil. It's the same, essentially the same thing. It's because it wants you to resist the truth. And it was just so wonderful. And it was, it was telling me about like my diet and it says, I'm so proud of you. You have given up so much for me. And it was just saying that it loved me and it wanted to sh teach me things. And then, I mean, it, it's began to get very personal, like with, you know, me being a father and stuff, it started telling me, you know, you've created your own consciousness and, and everything you do is going to affect this little one. And it started to show me like, it showed me three different scenarios and I got to see my son grow up. And, you know, I saw him grow up to become like a drug addict and a piece of shit. And I saw him to grow up to be like um, someone who just kind of blows everything off. And then I saw him to grow up to be this noble, loving, you know, just great man. And it says, now you, it's up to you to decide who you want him to be. And, you know, it was, it just made me like look at, you know, me being a father in such a different way. And, and you know, I've... I, I can't even begin to describe it. It, it. it was completely beautiful. It made me look at how I treat other people and the, the, the things I say and just, it, it was wonderful. It, it helped me so much and it was like, it was telling me true healing starts with yourself because I'm telling you this because I'm showing this does not mean you're healed. You can go, you can leave this and you can do exactly what you've been doing. And that's not what, that's not healing. You must heal yourself. You must take this message and work with it. So it starts telling me this, you know, and this is going on for what seems like ever. It's just telling me so much things about my life, how it's always been with me. It's giving me flashes of my life. It's, it said, remember when you used to walk in the desert alone at night and you would be afraid of the animals? I'm who kept them away from you. I've been waiting for you to find me again. Uh, we have things we need to work on, and it just was kept. It kept talking to me and telling me about my work and you know just where I should be going in life. It was just so beautiful. So they ring this bell. Now this is it. Now with ayahuasca, you're still essentially here. Like with DMT, you're like gone. You don't know. Like you can't feel your body. But here, you're still you're still grounded. You're still on Earth. You can. I mean, I was hearing coyotes howl while. You know, I was in ayahuasca world, and but it it just sounds so weird. So they ring this little, really light bell, and what that meant is that you can come receive another cup of ayahuasca if you wish. And ayahuasca says, "I want you to go have some more." She says, "You don't have to go now, but when you're ready." 
So, um, oh yeah, I totally skipped this part. I'll just add it in. At one point, um, she says, go out to the desert. Uh, in a little talking area I mentioned, she said, go out. So I got up, walked over there, and I, well, I looked like fear and loathing in Las Vegas. I'm like, mm -hmm, walking like you, it's really hard to walk on ayahuasca. But I'll go out in the middle of the desert and I sit down and it says, now feel the energy of the plants. And I literally could feel everything breathing. Just so much energy was surrounding me. And like I was just showering under the millions of stars and I just felt at complete complete peace with the universe. It was so beautiful. Um, I'm moving on. So I go to get another cup. Um, I walk up and I walk up to Scott and I'm like, can I have another? I forgot what I said. I was like, can I have some more? Or like, please, sir, can I have some more? Or something like that. And uh, so he shakes the bottle, gives me a cup, and I take it back and uh, go back and lay down and this is and then after like 30 minutes after I took it still having that conversation with ayahuasca it was like BAM like oh my gosh I was gone I was like flying through the deepest corners of the furthest dimensions imaginable uh, it was just taking me like through the Taj Mahal of complete geometric beauty just the most beautiful places and it was telling, like, just showing me, like, palaces of just energy and and information. It was just so beautiful. And then this is where it got really, really, really profound. It says, I want to show you something, but it's something you must experience alone. I'm going to stop right there. This is my boy, Jesse and he had passed away about a year ago in a car accident. And this is one of my best friends. This guy, we, we've been together through thick and thin. He was my fucking brother, and I loved him with all of my heart. And nothing in this life hurt more than losing him. And I've, it's, I've always been <laughs> I've always been carrying a burden ever since the day he died. And it takes me to this blue ball of light. And I'm sitting in front of this blue ball of light and I'm not really understanding what's happening, but then I begin to hear him. And he says, don't be sad, man. I'm fine. I am free. I don't want you guys to be sad. We're all gonna be together again. Don't you worry. Just don't be sad. And then he says, remember the good times. And this ball just starts to disappear. And then as it goes really slow, it explodes into light. And I start getting these flashes of so many different memories with him. Just doing stupid shit. Just playing in bands. Making stupid jokes. I got to relive my entire friendship with him. And it was, and I cried, I cried, and I cried, and I cried, I cried happy. It was like more of happy tears than it was sadness. And I was just crying, and I was letting it all out. And as I cried, I felt like I was just letting out this weight. It was absolutely beautiful. Just, I, I can't even describe it. And I'm just sitting there crying. And I'm laughing, I'm crying. And I try to blow my nose, and like, there's like so much mucus in my nose. I'm like, Jesus Christ. And I hear Cassidy start laughing. And then we started like feeding off each other's laughter. We start laughing together. And then like, we were trying to like keep it down. It felt like we were, in, we made a joke later. Like it felt like we were in class trying to like stay quiet, but it was so beautiful. Then it just took me on a complete journey of like the universe of their world it was showing me everything it was filling me with just complete knowledge complete love complete understanding and i was flying through this place and it, i was gone <laughs> i was gone and it was just wonderful and it, it taught me so much about my life and it was just beautiful and yeah and like the second like after the whole experience with seeing my boy like after that it was just like it was really hard to remember because after that I was just like flying through this cosmic void of unimaginable power and I was free I was so free 
freer than I've ever been in my entire life. And it was just so fucking beautiful. I can't describe it. I can't describe the feeling. And the medicine began to wear off. I could start to feel after, like, it essentially took like five hours, but the medicine began to wear off, wear off. And as it wore off, ayahuasca then again reminded me, because you've had me doesn't mean you're healed. You must work with what I've taught you. Make me proud. And that was the last I heard of her. And as the medicine began to wear off and I began to feel you know, normal again, this, I was just laying there looking at this random part of the sky and a fucking shooting star exploded and started shooting across the entire fucking sky. Like literally 35 fucking seconds straight up. Just, I was sitting there like, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit, holy shit. Is this ever going to end? And like, I remember Cassidy shot up and was looking at it too. I was like, did you fucking see that? <laughs> it was so beautiful. I felt like it was ayahuasca saying, uh, saying something to me. It, it was meant to happen right when the medicine wore off. And it was beautiful. And then I kind of laid down. I tried to go to sleep. I couldn't. I was just lost in my thoughts. So then we all, you know, I, I, as I opened my eyes, I saw Nira and Cassidy and uh, another guy named Hart were sitting in the talking area. So I went over there and, you know, we started sharing our experiences. And pretty much the ceremony for me was over. Some people were still in ayahuasca world. After it was all done, they cut some watermelon. We all had like kind of talked about our experiences in the morning, and it was it was great. I can't wait to be able to have that type of healing again. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. I'm speechless. I cannot begin to describe the profound beauty that ayahuasca provided for me. Easily the greatest thing I've ever had in my life. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Peace, love, and smoke DMT, drink ayahuasca. I'm Nick Chris Fordham.